My name is Christopher. I'm with the Paradise Aircraft, manufacturers of the Paradise P1. We hope you enjoy the following video. I invite you to visit our website at www.paradiseaircraft.us. Thank you. Now, Eric, my understanding is that over the past year, Rotax has changed some of the warranty policy. Can we maybe just get a little review on that? Yes. Dave, what happened was in 2009, Rotax made some major changes in their warranty policies on all of the engines and particularly wanted to recognize the realities of the longer times that they're going to have for warranties and the types of use they have. So uh, in 2009, we extended the warranty period coverage and the hours of coverage for each individual engine model series, the four strokes and the two strokes. Now we have a, a four-stroke engine here, a Rotax 912 series. Now what are the, some of the changes that have happened to the warranties on the 912s? This engine moved and uh, we recognized that the, the durability of the engines was very substantial. And a lot of people, when they put them into service, felt that the original 100 hour, t uh, hour limit was limited and the one year was limited. So these were moved to 18 consecutive months or 200 hours on the, all the four-stroke series which is a substantial increase for the customer. Now, when you say 18 months, when I look at the industry, a lot of the people out there are, for example, building a kit plane, and it could be you know, three years down the road before they actually get that engine to the point where they're going to use it. It's an excellent point, Dave, and what happens with this is we have to realize that the engines, all the four-stroke engines, have a hot test. They're actually run at the factory on a dynamometer for an acceptance run. That means it's gone through a complete hot test power test, everything's been evaluated. That said, they're pre-lubricated and they have the right amount of lubrication for a certain period of time. Now the maximum storage time for this engine in the original container is 12 months and if you take it out of the box after that time and you do some material that's called for in your maintenance manual, you put a little oil in it, uh, you take out a spark plug, rotate it a few times, you can then do that every three months, you can get it out to 24 months maximum. At 24 months, we get into an issue where the factory says, wait a minute, my hot test run now long is no longer valid, oils may have dried out in the engine. So the factory says there's a 24-month envelope from the date of manufacture to when the warranty period is going to end on that specific four-stroke series engine. What does that mean to the customer? Within the first six months of the engine being made, it has to be sold and it has to be registered to somebody. Uh, that then gives us the time limit that we're working with, the 18 consecutive months. Now, as long as the customer puts it into service within that uh, period of time, there's no problem. He'll get his full 18 months. The issue with this is when we talk about kit planes, just what you talked about is, what do I do if I have an engine sitting in the box and my build time is going to take two or three or four years, which can happen? Our recommendation is don't buy the engine with the kit. Take a take a note on it, get it from your OEM, and take delivery of the engine only when you're ready to install it on the airframe. Make sure you have an engine that's fresh, the hot test is still valid, and make sure that your warranty starts within the time period it was prescribed to start at. I don't have to go through any retesting of the engine, and I don't have to worry about corrosion, and I don't have to worry about ADs or mandatory bulletins that have come out in the meantime and have to do updates on the engine. Everything will be current. Now when you talk about a Rotax warranty, what exactly is all covered in a Rotax one? The engine is covered as it's delivered. In other words, when we get an engine, less the propeller, if it's delivered in this configuration, this particular engine, everything from the prop flange back to the ignition that you see would be covered. Now, anything beyond that would be up to the airframe manufacturer. If the airframe manufacturer installs the exhaust, he installs the engine mount, and all the else, that would be up to the airframe manufacturer to cover. The warranty covers the engine as it was delivered to the OEM or, or to the kit builder. Now, for example, say we had a warranty on a stator unit. The stator unit would be replaced. Now, is labor also included in part of this warranty program? It is, Dave, but uh, labor is covered, as we said, as delivered. So we pay for the engine warranty. We normally would not pay for the removal and replacement from the airframe. That's up to the airframer. In the case of experimentals, the airframer would be the builder of the aircraft. So, uh, 
right, for like example, that. if you were to build an aircraft with this engine, it would be a, a Loveman uh, Vans or a, a Loveman Rands aircraft or whatever you would call it, but you would be the builder. In a LSA aircraft, it's different. The OEM is the manufacturer, so they would have to work with the customers on getting extraneous or extra coverage if there was something unusual about the installation. We'll cover the engine itself because that's what was delivered to the manufacturer, in this case either the customer or to the manufacturing factory. Now, when the owner receives this engine, how and what is the process then for registering the warning? That's an excellent question. With each engine, there is a serial number and uh, the serial number is located if we look at the back of the engine, on the ignition housing for the four-stroke engines, we'll find a seven-digit serial number. And that's the key number we need. Now the engine will have with it a document, a warranty registration document, and that document will have that number imprinted into it. The proper procedure is for the manufacturer uh, to fill in this document and record that information. Now, if it's an aircraft that's coming from Europe, for example, they have to do a pre-registration online and make sure it's registered at least to where it was sold. If the engine is not registered, that doesn't mean you cannot get warranty, but the first step is to get it registered with your service center. Your point of sale contact should have already done that. Either the kit builder will do that directly with who we bought the engine from, or the manufacturer will do it directly with the distributor who sold the engine. Once it's registered in the system, your warranty is in place. Now, is someone is in the position, for example, they purchase a kit plane used, the airplane has not been finished, they still have a new engine in the box, there should be paperwork there that they can fill out or is there a place on the internet that they can go where there's they can register that engine? In the United States um, or, or South America, they, would, they can do all that with their seller. Now in some countries, such as in Canada, there's an online web page they can do it with. But it has to be done by distributor, the distributor location. So in this case, if it's in the United States, it would be registered by the manufacturer and uh, through the service center. The service center would make sure that all of the details have been recorded. Um, now, if you're a used aircraft and you, uh, you picked up an engine used, or an aircraft with a used engine, you can get the registration transferred to you. Uh, the, the registration is totally transferable. I would even recommend if the engine's off warranty to transfer the ownership because then when there's anything that might come out in later life on the engine by serial number, at least we know who the customer is and it may be used for tracking purposes. And that's an, another thing, if someone has a used aircraft is looking at the history of that engine, they can, once they've registered with Rotax, they actually get a service bulletin or notice of service bulletin. If you register, there's two different things to remember. Warranty registration does not put you on an automatic mailing list. You have an additional web page you could go to if you want notifications, and you would do that through the www.rotax-owner.com web page. They offer a free service. Um, the, the, it's a pay site with the exception of bulletins. That's free. You can register for free bulletin service, and they'll only notify you, though, of any new bulletin published. Um, however, they do keep historical documents, as does the Rotax-Engine-Owners, uh, sorry, Rotax Aircraft Engines site. The, the main parent site for Rotax maintains all of the historical documents by bulletins, by service letters, and all the manuals. So it's, uh, the warranty policy is also published on the site, and it's available if you don't have one in your original paperwork, your owner's manual, and if you didn't get it with your engine. If you're a second owner, it's always best to go and download the newest documentation anyway and keep it with the engine. So, Eric, there should be just a, a couple of websites that, that these people should become familiar with so that they can get information on the Rotex. Uh... You bet. To get service bulletins and updates what's happening with your engine that's, once you've got it, I would highly recommend you use the Rotex-Owner.com website. That's a great website for getting bulletins and getting information. Now, the main parent website is rotax-aircraft-engines.com, and that's the website that Rotax maintains. It has all of the written data. To register the engine or transfer it, you can do that through your manufacturer. If you bought a kit from Vans Aircraft, they can help you. If you bought it from Rand's Aircraft, they can help you, and so on. Uh, TechNam, CT, all maintain website access to log in the engine owner, 
and they can do transfers. If you have any problem with that, contact your regional independent service center. You can get that information on who that is from the RotaxFlyingClub.com website. So we can help you out if you have any kind of problem with registration or knowing what your warranty uh, requirements might be.